Welcome to the Appendix, where we read the primary sources of the past so that the present can be better understood. Today's primary source, The Association, October 20th, 1774. On September 24th, the Continental Congress voted non-intercourse with Great Britain, and three days later, a committee was appointed charged with drafting a plan to carry this resolution into effect. The committee reported October 12th, and the report was adopted on the 18th and signed on the 20th October. The signature of the association, says Hildreth, quote, may be considered as the commencement of the American Union, unquote. Of particular interest are the provisions prohibiting the importation of slaves and providing for committees of correspondence to enforce the rules of the association. Several of the colonies had already adopted non-importation agreements. The effect of the non-incourse resolutions can be read in the petitions of English merchants to Parliament. We the Majesty's most loyal subjects the delegates of the several colonies of New Hampshire, Massachusetts Bay, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, the three lower counties of Newcastle, Kent, and Sussex, on Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina, deputed to represent them in a Continental Congress held in the city of Philadelphia, on the fifth day of September, 1774, avowing our allegiance to His Majesty, our affection and regard for our fellow subjects in Great Britain and elsewhere, affected with deep anxiety and most alarming apprehensions at those grievous and distresses with which His Majesty's American subjects are oppressed, and having taken under our most serious deliberation the state of the whole continent, find that the present unhappy situation of our affairs is occasioned by a ruinous system of colony administration adopted by the British Ministry about the year 1763, evidently calculated for enslaving these colonies and with them the British Empire. In prosecution of which system, various acts of Parliament have been passed for raising a revenue in America, for depriving the American subjects in many instances of the constitutional trial by jury, exposing their lives to danger by directing a new and illegal trial beyond the seas for crimes alleged to have been committed in America, and in prosecution of the same system, several late, cruel, and oppressive acts have been passed, respecting the town of Boston and the Massachusetts Bay, and also an act for extending the province of Quebec, so as to border on the western frontier of the colonies, establishing an arbitrary government therein, discouraging the settlement of British subjects in that wide extended country. Thus, by the influence of civil principles and ancient prejudices, to dispose the inhabitants to act with hostility against the free Protestant colonies whenever a wicked ministry shall choose so to direct them. To obtain redress of these grievances which threaten destruction to the lives, liberty, and property of His Majesty's subjects in North America, we are of opinion that a non-importation, non-consumption, and non-exportation agreement faithfully adhered to will prove the most speedy, effectual, and peaceable measure, and therefore we do for ourselves and the inhabitants of the several colonies whom we represent firmly agree and associate under the sacred ties of virtue, honor, and love of our country as follows. 1. 
that from and after the first day of December next, we will not import into British America from Great Britain or Ireland any goods, wares, or merchandise whatsoever, or from any other place any such goods, wares, or merchandise as shall have been exported from Great Britain or Ireland, nor will we after that day import any East India tea from any part of the world, nor any molasses, syrups, panels, coffee, or pimento from the British plantations, or from Dominica, nor wines from Mandera or the Western Islands, nor foreign indigo. 2. We will neither import nor purchase any slave imported after the first day of December next, after which time we will wholly discontinue the slave trade, and will neither be concerned in it ourselves, nor will we hire our vessels, nor sell our commodities or manufacturers to those who are concerned in it. 3. As a non-consumption agreement strictly adhered to will be an effectual security for the observation of the non-importation, we, as above, solemnly agree and associate that from this day we will not purchase or use any tea imported on account of the East India Company or any on which a duty has been or shall be paid, and from and after the first day of March next we will not purchase or use any East India tea, whatever, nor will we, nor shall any person for or under us purchase or use any of those goods, wares, or merchandise we have agreed not to import, which we shall know or have cause to suspect were imported after the first day of December, except such as come under the rules and directions of the 10th article hereafter mentioned. 4. The earnest desire we have not to injure our fellow subjects in Great Britain, Ireland, or the West Indies induces us to suspend a non-exportation until the 10th day of September, 1775, at which time if the said acts and parts of acts of the British Parliament herein after mentioned are not repealed, we will not directly or indirectly export any merchandise or commodity whatsoever to Great Britain, Ireland, or the West Indies, except rice to Europe. 5. Such as are merchants and use the British and Irish trade, we give orders as soon as possible to their factor, agents, and correspondents in Great Britain and Ireland not to ship any goods to them on any pretense whatsoever as they cannot be received in America. And if any merchant residing in Great Britain or Ireland shall directly or indirectly ship any goods, wares, or merchandise for America in order to break the said non-importation agreement or in any manner contravene the same on such unworthy conduct being well attested, it ought to be made public, and on the same being so done, we will not, from henceforth, have any commercial connection with such merchant. 6. That such as are owners of vessels will give positive orders to their captains or masters not to receive on board their vessel any goods prohibited by the said non-importation agreement on pain of immediate dismission from their service. 7. We will use our utmost endeavors to improve the breed of sheep and increase their number to the greatest extent, and to that end we will kill them as seldom as many be, especially those of the most profitable kind, nor will we export any to the West Indies or anywhere else of those of us who are or may become overstocked with or can conveniently spare any sheep, will dispose of them to our neighbors, especially to the poorer sort, on moderate terms. 8. We will, in our several stations, 
encourage frugality, economy, and industry and promote agriculture, arts, and the manufacturers of this country, especially that of wool, and will discontinuance and discourage every species of extravagance and dissipation, especially all horse racing and all kinds of gaming, cockfighting, exhibition of shoes, plays, and other expensive diversions and entertainments. And on the death of any relation or friend, none of us or any of our families will go into any further mourning dress than a black crepe or ribbon on the arm or hat for gentlemen and a black ribbon and necklace for ladies. And we will discontinue the giving of gloves and scarves at funerals. 9. Such as our vendors of goods or merchandise will not take advantage of the scarcity of goods that may be occasioned by this association, but will sell the same at the rates we have been respectively accustomed to do for twelve months last past. And if any vendor of goods or merchandise shall sell such goods on higher terms or shall in any manner or by any device whatsoever violate or depart from this agreement, no persons ought, nor will any of us deal with any such person, or his or her factor or agent at any time thereafter for any commodity whatever. 10. In the case of any merchant, trader, or other person, shall import any goods or merchandise after the first day of December and before the first day of February next, the same ought forthwith at the election of the owner to be either reshipped or delivered up to the committee of the country or town wherein they shall be imported to be stored at the risk of the importer until the non-importation agreement shall cease or be sold under the direction of the committee aforesaid in the last mentioned case, the owner or owners of such goods shall be reimbursed out of the sales, the first cost and charges, the profit, if any, to be applied towards relieving and employing such poor inhabitants of the town of Boston as are immediate sufferers by the Boston Port Bill, and a particular account of all goods so returned, stored, or sold to be inserted in the public papers, and if any goods or merchandise shall be imported after the said first day of February, the same ought forthwith to be sent back, without breaking any of the packages thereof. 11 that a committee be chosen in every county, city, and town by those who are qualified to vote for representatives in the legislatures whose business it shall be attentively to observe the conduct of all persons touching this association and when it shall be made to appear to the satisfaction of a majority of any such committee that any person within the limits of their appointment has violated this association, that such majority do forthwith cause the truth of the case to be published in the Gazette, to the end that all such foes to the rights of British America may be publicly known and universally condemned as the enemies of American liberty, and thenceforth we respectively will break off all dealings with him or her. 12. That the Committee of Correspondence in the respective colonies do frequently inspect the entries of their custom houses and inform each other from time to time of the true state thereof and of every other material circumstance that may occur relative to this association. 3. That all manufacturers of this country be sold at reasonable prices, so that no undue advantage be taken of a future 
scarcity of goods. 14. And we do further agree and resolve that we will have no trade, commerce, dealings, or intercourse whatsoever with any colony or province in North America, which shall not accede to, or which shall hereafter violate this association, but will hold them as unworthy of the rights of freemen and as inimical to the liberties of their country. And we do solemnly bind ourselves and our constituents under the ties aforesaid to adhere to this association until such parts of the several acts of Parliament passed since the close of the last war as impose or continue duties on tea, wine, molasses, syrups, panels, coffee, sugar, pimento, indigo, foreign paper, glass, painter's colors imported into America and extend the powers of the Admiralty Courts beyond their ancient limits, deprive the American subjects of trial by jury, authorize the judge's certificates to indemnify the prosecutor for damages that he might otherwise be liable to form a trial by his peers, require oppressive security from a claimant of ships or goods seized before he shall be allowed to defend his property or repealed. And until that part of the act entitled An Act for the Better Securing His Majesty's Dockyards, Magazines, Ships, Ammunition, and Stores by which any persons charged with committing any of the offenses therein described in America may be tried in any shire or county within the realm is repealed. And until the four acts passed the last session of Parliament, viz. those for stopping the port and blocking up the harbor of Boston, that for altering the charter and government of the Massachusetts Bay, and that which is entitled an act for the better administration of justice, etc., and that for the extending the limits of Quebec, etc., are repealed, and we recommend it to the provincial conventions and to the committees in the respective colonies to establish such farther regulations as they may think proper for carrying into execution this association. The foregoing association being determined upon by the Congress was ordered to be subscribed by the several members thereof. And thereupon we have hereunto set our respective names accordingly in Congress, Philadelphia, October 20th, 1774. Signed, Peyton Randolph, President. Thank you for joining us for our primary source today on The Appendix. We will see you in the stacks.